everyone, welcome back to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we are continuing our series on how to LS swap something with part seven, our fuel pressure regulator, fuel lines, and fuel filter. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and thank our sponsor, Summit Racing. They are a fantastic sponsor to deal with. They have sent me all kinds of amazing parts to make this LS swap possible. This series really wouldn't be happening without them. They have an incredible site, amazing customer support, great prices, and a very wide selection. So make sure you buy all of your speed parts from summitracing.com. So like I said in the beginning of the video, we are going to be putting in our fuel pressure regulator. Uh, I mounted it up front and under the engine bay for two reasons. I really think the red anodization job looks amazing on it. I think it looks snazzy and it's gonna be easier for me to film uh, setting our fuel pressure when it's right underneath the hood instead of somewhere on the frame. If you were doing this, you know, not on YouTube, you could get away with putting the fuel pressure regulator somewhere closer to the tank, just so you don't use as much fuel line and you only have one fuel line running to the front of the car. I do advise that for you, but uh, for instructional purposes, I did mount that underneath the hood. So if you're wondering why I put it underneath the hood, that is why, so I could do a nice instructional bit when the time comes. So we're gonna run our fuel lines, we're gonna have our send and return, and then our uh, feed line two engine. We're gonna put our uh, fuel pressure regulator on with our fuel pressure gauge and the fuel filter. Just make sure you put that fuel filter before your pressure regulator, always a good idea. You just want that fuel filter somewhere before the fuel pressure regulator, and that's all you need to know. Um, because you can't put it in our setup, you can't put it before the pump, and you really usually don't do that anyway because the pump is usually in the tank. But if your fuel pump is outside of your tank, you went that route, I would go ahead and put your fuel filter after the pump just because it's gonna be difficult enough for that pump to draw out of the tank for the uh, to prime it. You don't wanna make it any more difficult with that, and usually pumps don't need a ton of uh, filterage, and you do have that sock in the tank. Uh, to do it a little bit so if i were you i would be putting it you know pump filter then regulator but for our uh, situation we have the pump inside the tank then the filter then the regulator so a little bit of a little bit of a difference there for you but i thought i'd mention it so in the last episode we put the tank in with the fuel pump that was really its own thing that really took a long time so with this video we will be wrapping up how to install the fuel system for an ls swap so let's go ahead and jump into it Okay, so here is like a medley of uh, fuel line components you're probably going to need, you are going to need if you're using our setup. And the uh, kind of the star of the show is this Summit branded fuel pressure regulator for EFI. And this is really neat, the way that this works. Here's this, and of course sent over by our sponsor Summit Racing. The link is down below in the description. Look at that awesome red anodization job too. That looks so nice. And basically it has three holes in it on the, bo the body of it, comes with a blocker, that aside for now, and either side of these is an inlet or an outlet, and this is a return, and this is your boost reference gauge. Don't worry about that, we'll just put a vacuum cap over that, we're not running boost. If you're running boost, then you're gonna have to worry about that, but we're gonna keep this nice and simple. And what is interesting is these fittings are actually, they're dash six, but they're dash six orb, O-R-B. So you can't just put a regular dash six fitting in there and call it good, you have to get an orb fitting, which has this kind of O-ring arrangement on there. And I have a couple of fittings that is this fitting. This is also sent over by Summit Racing, has dash six orb on one side and regular dash six on the other. And everything is dash six, so I kept it nice and simple. No adapters, nothing crazy like that. And the reason you need this regulator is because the fuel pump isn't smart enough to, you know, tone itself down in order to feel, feed your fuel system. It's going to run at 100 PSI, at least ours is. It's going to run at 100 PSI. And if it does that all the time into a system that uh, really wants it to be at 58 PSI, you'll either burn out the pumps, uh, the you'll burn out the fuel pump, the, the fuel injectors won't work right, things won't work right. So you need to put it into here and regulate it down to 58 PSI. And then if you don't put a return, which you really should, the fuel pump's gonna keep trying to cram 100 PSI into here, but this is saying, uh-uh, I'm only gonna let 58. You'll end up burning the pump out, so you have to run that return. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that, don't worry. And then over here, we have another summit part. This is really cool. This is our fuel filter. recommend running one of these bad boys. Summit branded, very cool, dash six on both sides. And this is rated for 75 PSI, so it is for our EFI system. Make sure you get the right one. This is a uh, dash six fuel gauge. So it has a 
I believe it's eighth inch thread right here. And you can just put this anywhere in your fuel line and it will be able to tell you the fuel pressure, which is what this does sent over by Summit. And all the links are down below in the description. And you can see it's a nice uh, fluid filled PSI gauge. And then it just goes to that uh, pipe thread right there. So pretty cool. That will be excellent. Again, I'll show you how to do that. And then there's just some dash six fittings to dash six line and uh, some unions. You might want some of those. Uh, right angle, always helpful to have a couple of right angles just laying around. I even have a 45 degree or that swivels. Very cool. What's this? Oh yeah. And then uh, for the end of our system, I noticed on our fuel rail that it you know, has two inlets or two outlets, however you want to look at it. Um, so we are going to need a dash six cap to cap that off um, so we can build pressure and it just doesn't dump gas everywhere. And then to secure a fuel line to our frame, we have some self drilling, self tapping. Sometimes they're called tech screws and that will uh, let our Adele clips, which are these bad boys, hold these to our frame. And that is how we're gonna keep everything nice and neat and organized, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So the way I'm gonna be setting up my fuel pressure regulator is a little bit different than I would be doing it if I was off camera. Normally I'd be having the fuel pressure regulator closer to the uh, tank and the pump, but because this is YouTube and I wanna show things uh, as easily as possible, I'm actually gonna put the fuel pressure gauge off of the regulator underneath the hood. Um, usually put the fuel pressure gauge somewhere under the hood and that's kind of the arts part of it, where, where you want it, how good you want it to look, etc. cetera. Um, I want it to look really snazzy and it's got this nice red anodized finish. I think it'll look like a million bucks uh, and look really nice under the hood. So that's where I'm gonna mount it and just have uh, longer you know, send and return lines. That's fine, you can do it that way, or if you want, you can put this closer to the tank, that's okay too. I'm just showing you the way I'm doing it, that way you can watch me adjust fuel pressure basically in real time. It's gonna be really, really cool, trust me. But the very first thing we need to do is make sure there's nothing in our orb ports for our uh, fuel pressure regulator. I've also taken the plate off and hogged out one of the holes just because uh, that's what's gonna work for us. We're actually gonna modify we're actually gonna use the existing battery tray threads for one of the holes. And again, that is gonna be per application. You are gonna to have to decide what you're gonna do. Otherwise, you could use something like a tech screw and put it in and be good to go. Um, and again, however you wanna mount it, that is up to you. Heck, you could even use zip ties if you really wanted to. Don't recommend it, but you could. So what we're gonna do is take our orb fitting and we're just gonna put a little bit of WD-40 on the O-ring, because it does have an O-ring. Never put O-rings on dry. And then we can put that in one of its homes. Oh, very nice. Grab your dash seven wrench. And we're just gonna snug that down. And uh, I don't have a torque spec or anything, you know, wrist tight, use your common sense. Oh, just like that, absolutely perfection. Go ahead and do that for these two as well. So again, I'm gonna be mounting our fuel pressure gauge right next to our regulator. That way you can see me adjust it in real time and watch the needle flick up and down. So what you're gonna need is to take that fitting that has that you know special port, the 1 8 port, and this is just dash six to the dash six fitting, non orbs, this is regular dash six. And then you wanna clock the gauge how you want it. You can even leave this loose and tighten that later. So that's kind of the angle I want and you can loosen it and change it later. It's not permanent, it's all good. One of the great things about dash We'll tighten that up with a dash six wrench. You just want these snug. They don't have to be Hulk tight, just snug. That's really good. So then you can kind of see the angle of our gauge. Oh, that's gonna look like a million bucks. Sweet. And then on our eighth inch pipe thread, I'm gonna take some of this Loctite thread sealant and apply it to our threads. There we go. Don't need to drown it, but there does need to be thread sealant on there. And we can just start those threads. So once our gauge starts to get snug on our fitting there, we can go ahead and grab a 9 16th wrench and a little square bit on the back, we're gonna use to actually tighten it down. And it doesn't have to be Hulk tight, just snug. You can even have it. I'm gonna have it so it reads nice for us. So you can tell just at a glance. I can feel it's tightening up pretty good. Oh, that feels fantastic. And there you go. Oh, nice and one unit. Look at that. So on the boost reference gauge before we mount it, let's go ahead and just take that out so we can get access to this bolt hole a lot easier. 
You can put it back later. So here's our original battery mounting bracket bolt hole right here at the end of my pointer finger. And I have the bolt that's gonna work for us on that with our regulator. And I'm just gonna install that. I've also uh, drilled a pilot hole for our tech screw, make it a little easier on us. Now some people just send them right into sheet metal with no pilot screw. I like to drill, I like to drill a pilot, pilot hole. Makes it a little bit easier on me. So we're just gonna put a couple threads in, get some good uh, threads on there, and we can grab our tech screw. So I have my tech screw loaded up in my 5 16 deep well. There we go, that's nice and snug. You don't want to over tighten that too much because you can just pull its thread it's, it's making right out. And then we can finish tightening our other bolt over here that goes in our battery mount originally. And again, this is all dependent on how you want to mount this. You don't want this underneath your engine compartment? That's totally fine. Put it under the frame somewhere. Put it on the inside of the frame. Put it wherever you think is going to serve you best. And if you need any help deciding, you can use our website, twocarpros.com, and ask a question for absolutely free. Just not like that. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that looks really cool. The next thing we can do is put on some other Dash 6 fittings because, you know, I want this one to be a right angle so it points straight down. I think that'll look really snazzy and I have this one, so we can just put that guy on there. Another cool thing about uh, dash fitting, fittings as opposed to like a pipe fitting is it can turn right up until you snug it down. You don't, you won't hit the firewall or nothing. Just make sure it's pointed the direction you want it. Which this guy is. Grab our dash six wrench. Snug that bad boy up. Ooh, that looks good. So here's the top of our tank we're super familiar with on ours. This is our send. That is our return. And I've just kind of routed it around the underside of the car. You want to keep it away from the exhaust. There's actually a pretty big gap between the fuel line here and the exhaust here, or anything that moves, such as, you know, a shock or the differential. Anything that moves, you want to keep it away from. Anything that gets hot, you want to keep it away from. And then I also use some Adele clips that I just bolted, you know, tech screwed right into the bottom of the car. And then I zip tied it to an existing clip right here. Pretty easy. And then they both come like this, zip tied it to the brake line for right now. And then we're coming back over here. And normally, if I wasn't doing this on camera or something, this is probably where I would put the fuel pressure regulator just so it's out of the way and uh, kind of stealth, kind of cool. But for this application, I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, fuel filter right here because you want the fuel filter before the regulator so nothing gets in the regulator. And um, I've already marked which hose needs to be cut and where, which is right there. So let's go ahead and get to it. So check it out. I've already terminated the end with a dash six fitting. If you don't know how to do that, link down below in the description. Super easy, but it is its own video. And then I put an Adele clip on, very easy. I drilled a small hole. Again, some people just send these. I'm just gonna grab our tech screw. And snug that down. Oh yeah, check that out. Looks great. So we can grab our fuel filter and put that in line. You can mount this anywhere you like. This is just the way I want to do it. So that's the way it's happening. I like it so you can see the Summit logo. I think it looks snazzy. So then we're gonna grab a seven and a half size AN wrench. Put that around the filter body. And then we can snug the fitting to it. Oh yeah, check that out. Our fuel filter's installed. I don't think the direction matters because there's no arrow on it, there's no literature. I just said it so the Summit logo reads correct because I think it looks really nice. I don't think it matters which way it goes in. So on our return side, I've already terminated our fuel line with the Dash 6 fitting. And we can hook that to the bottom. The bottom of the regulator is our return back to our fuel tank. There we go. Grab a dash six wrench. We can snug that up. It doesn't have to be hold tight. Just wrist tight. Perfectly good. And check that out. Look how clean that looks. Heck yeah. And then our feed line is going to go right here. And what's over here is actually what's going to feed our fuel rail. 
So we're looking at now is the back of our fuel rail. Most LS fuel rails have two inlets or two outlets or an inlet or an outlet. Uh, however you really want to set it up. I'm just going to do it one inlet, not on this side and left side. Actually, uh, we're going to put a cap dash six cap on this side. We can use this later if we want to uh, maybe air bleed the system or something like that. Grab our dash six wrench and we're just going to snug that down. Like that, perfection. And now we can run the fuel line from the regulator over to where we're going to have it go into the fuel rail. So now we're on the other side of the fuel rail and we're gonna grab our elbow. And again, this is gonna be bespoke to what you're working on. You know, do you want it at a 45 degree angle? Do you want it at a, you know, 135 degree angle? Whatever you want. This is kind of where the art part, you know, comes in. So we can clock our elbow how we want it. Which I'm thinking, heck, maybe even just like that, so it's a little stealthy now, go behind the intake manifold. Yeah, that looks snazzy. Oh, I like that. And of course, because it's AN, you can just loosen up and change it if you want to. One of the best parts about this stuff. If you don't like it, change it. Yeah, like that, that looks pretty good. Okay, with our fuel line made, our final fuel line for today, we can go ahead and attach it on the regulator side. Grab our dash six wrench, snug that fitting on down. May have to brace the regular little radar. Oh. You have to brace the regulator just a little bit. Just snug like that, perfect. Then we can put this on and you know, I'm just gonna leave this one on finger tight, you know, so nothing gets in the fuel system and is a problem. But I'll tell you why I'm not gonna tighten it down. The reason is, is I'm gonna take this back off later on so I can remove it with my hand and put it in the, this end of the fuel line into like a cup or a bucket or something. And we're gonna turn the system on, we're gonna get the pump pumping fuel and then it's going to drain into a little cup and then any kind of contaminants that we don't know are in the fuel line, filter, whatever, are gonna end up in the cup and not in our fuel injectors. So we're gonna leave that loose for just right this moment. So from underneath the car, there is our regulator and our two lines, which we just saw. I've already mounted and routed those lines, our send and return. They come down. I'm actually going to secure it here to the body at some point, really soon. Because I want to keep these as secure as possible, keep them away from anything that moves, anything that gets hot. I've used some Adele clips, zip tied them out of the way. Back here is our filter. That is nice and Adele clipped to the frame. And that goes back to our send and return that we're so familiar with on our tank. So the filter is on the send side. Non-filter is the return. Always make sure your filter is before your regulator. And we have that nice and plumbed. It looks absolutely fantastic. And I have, for those of you asking why I routed it above this mount, it's because I'm probably gonna have the exhaust here. I'm gonna have to move this brake line and we don't want that anywhere near the exhaust where it would get hot and melt. So yeah, this is what, this is what my setup looks like. Yours could be a little bit different. Feel free to be creative. Feel free to mount your pressure regulator back towards the fuel tank. I like mine up front just so you can see exactly what I'm doing when the time comes. So the next thing we need to do is run our vent tube. This will be the final bit of our fuel system. And you might be tempted to run it kind of this way, but look, you're right next to the exhaust, so you don't really want to do that. What you want to do is feed it up and over the frame like this. And if you have a rear mounted fill like on my Camaro, you really don't have to worry about that because it's at the very rear of the car. And what we want to do is run it up with the filler neck. We want the vent uh, as high as we possibly can go on that. That way when we install our rollover valve, everything will be okay. So before we install our vent rollover protection, what this does is in the event of an accident, say you flip the car over, it's gonna be like this. This will block off the flow of gas. I kind of thought it worked the other way, but I just looked up the instructions and they want it mounted vertically like this. So in the event of a rollover, it does like this. I'm assuming so that's the way the 
Uh, that way the pressure of the gasoline on this uh, keeps it closed so gas doesn't go everywhere. And you absolutely need something like this. Uh, technically you could just get away with doing this and mounting it up and being fine, but I do recommend this device. And that's so the tank can breathe because the tank is going to need to be able to be vented. And back in the day they used to just have like a vented gas cap. Um, but you can't really rely on those just because they do get clogged and uh, when you go around corners and you know hit the throttles this is a hot rod gas can slosh out of there and that's no good so we can just install this right to our fuel line i'm not gonna worry about a hose clamp it's pretty snug in there so uh this also can be mounted like on a bulkhead fitting or something uh something really fancy but you know what i'm just gonna zip tie it and what you want to make sure is that the vent is higher than the fill neck of the tank so you want to make sure that this goes nearly all the way up and I'll show you that in just a moment. So this is what our finished product looks like. I have the vent way up there at the filler neck. It is tactically zip tied in place. Alternatively, you could make like a really fancy bracket or something and make it look really good, but the zip ties will suffice. As long as it doesn't go anywhere and doesn't touch anything hot or anything that moves, you're made in the shade. So as you can see, our Summit fuel pressure regulator, our gauge, and all our fittings and hoses are mounted correctly for our feed, our return, and our feed to engine going that way. And our fuel system is done. That is how to finish up your fuel system for your LS swap. That is it. The fuel system is completely done. All we have to do is air bleed it and we're gonna drain a little bit of fuel out of it just to make sure we got all the stuff you can't quite see out of it. And we'll go over that when we prime it. That'll be kind of like a uh, final checklist before we're ready to start it. So don't worry about that just yet. But if you've been watching this far, thank you so much for watching. This video has helped you all. Consider giving it a like. Thank you so much, Racing, for sponsoring this video. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time.